around the world, one of nature's greatest wonders, coral reefs are turning white and dying. But could there be a way to save our reefs? I'm a marine biologist, and I'm setting out to meet the scientists who say they can. They're embarking on radical new experiments, breeding super corals to withstand warming oceans. But it's risky. Can we intervene without making things worse? They could breed a monster coral that takes over the reef. It's daring science. Can it save the reef? This Pilbara landscape looks a little like the surface of Mars. It was on my first research trip here that I found this little rock. And this rock shows us that life lived on land 580 million years earlier than we previously thought. It also shows that hot springs were forming 3 billion years earlier than we previously knew. This is a real shift in the way we think that you can't make life in the oceans. It had to be on land. This piece of Australian research may alter our understanding of the origins of life on Earth and the search for life on Mars. Hello. Welcome to this very special event, co-hosted and presented by UNSW's Big Questions Institute and the Sydney Opera House. I'm very proud to be co-hosting an event that brings inspiring scientists onto the stage of the Concert Hall, a world-famous venue. You'll hear another incredible UNSW science exploration and discovery story, a story that dates the first evidence of land-based life on Earth. And finally, we have Professor Martin Van Cranendonk, the director of the Australian Centre for Astrobiology. The discovery that we've made in three and a half billion year old rocks on Earth is some of the oldest evidence of life was living in hot springs on land. Now, hot springs on land are very exciting because they commonly occur in fields of up to 100 pools, and they have all different chemistries, so the chemical mixing potential and the complexity is really high, but the best thing of all is that in these hot spring pools, they have the capacity for wetting and drying. And there have been experiments that show that that wetting and drying actually makes those simple organic molecules that you can find in meteorites, you can find all through the universe, it makes them bigger, makes them stickier, makes them more complex. And that's exciting for Mars because Mars doesn't look like it ever had an ocean, but we know it had volcanoes and we know it had water, which are the ingredients for hot springs. And if you had the science to defeat extinction and bring an animal back to life, would you? The door to that choice is about to open. A brave new world could become our reality. In Australia, five scientists have embarked on a journey to bring back an extinct Australian animal. The last and the first of his kind. People throughout the world are just going to be staggered. This is a, a hard ask. Every step along the way is a further step towards a miracle. The technology is certainly available.
We're working in developing countries to help people farm fish for food and income security. The aim is zero hunger worldwide. Many people in Papua New Guinea live off $1.50 a day, so it's very difficult for them to purchase food, um, and it's also difficult for them to raise their own animals for a source of protein. So they're malnourished and their children are malnourished, and often they can't afford to send their children to school, and that sets up a cycle of poverty that's very difficult to break. Together with the National Fisheries Authority of Papua New Guinea, we're breaking that cycle. We see more children at school and there's a whole strata of disaffected youth that are no longer turning to drugs and crime. And we've seen hectares of marijuana fields that have been converted to highly productive fish farms. We train prisoners in fish farming so that they've got a livelihood when they're released from prison, but it also provides them with a source of protein in, in their prison diets. We've even seen a reduction in tribal fighting and also an increase in social stability in all the places we've been working. Our Wild Deserts project is focused up in Sturt National Park, in, right up in the corner of northwestern New South Wales. And what we've got is a tremendous opportunity to reintroduce seven locally extinct uh, mammals back into this area. These disappeared because of foxes and cats. Uh, we are essentially going to be tackling, with the latest university science, one of the big conservation issues in Australia. You know, the loss and decline of native mammals in particular. And Australia has the worst extinction record of any continent in the world. And our real aim is to um, re-establish not only these animals in that ecosystem, but restore that ecosystem so that our wild deserts can be realised again. Seaweeds like crayweed are super important. They actually provide the habitat and food for entire communities. It's not that long ago that we actually were able to quantify that crayweed has disappeared. It has disappeared from the entire Sydney metropolitan area. Just in those 70 kilometres where Sydney is, there's no crayweed at all. We know that it was around until the late 1970s or early 1980s. We think it has something to do with all the sewage that used to fall out pretty much directly onto the beaches and bays of Sydney at the time. We know that in the last 30, 40 years, water quality in Sydney has increased phenomenally. You know, we have whales coming into Sydney Harbour. Is Sydney now a suitable place? Is the water quality good enough now to actually get crayweed back? The plan was to move some crayweed from places where it still exists back into Sydney where we know it used to be. So you guys don't want the cable ties going. To be honest, we, we didn't think it would work. We were very sceptical about the success of our first experiment. It was a November day, I remember. Still kind of cold in the water and we went out to have a little look at them and, and check on the adult crayweed. It was actually amazing. Not only we saw that the transplanted crayweed was still there, but also that they had babies. On the cable ties we'd use to attach them, on the bolts that we'd use to drill the mats into the ground, they were absolutely everywhere. When we saw that it was actually working, we were really excited because it's a good news story. So Operation Crayweed is underway, it works, but what we'd like is to actually bring it back to the whole of Sydney. 